women dies in Plymouth Monday morning. Volunteers needed to help with storm cleanup. Rape kit backlog cleared. These stories and more coming up on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, service WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. Hello, I'm Maddie Pfister, and welcome to Community News Review for Monday, September 10th, 2018. A 25-year-old woman is dead after a crash Sunday morning near Plymouth, and the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department says they got called out shortly after 11 a.m., responding to the T intersection of Country Air and Sumac Road. Deputies say the woman was southbound on Country Air and did not slow for the stop sign at Sumac. She went through the intersection, hit a tree, and the 2015 Chevy Cruze she was driving rolled several times before it came to rest. The woman was ejected from the vehicle and died at the scene. No one was hurt in drunk driving crash at the intersection of 8th and Bluff on Sheboygan's north side Wednesday afternoon. Police were called around 345 after a vehicle struck another vehicle and then continued into a side of a house. The driver of the vehicle, a 21-year-old New Holstein man, was arrested on a charge of operating while intoxicated, causing injury and also received additional traffic citations. A crash between a motorcycle and a farm tractor left two people dead in Fond du Lac County. The Sheriff's Department says 49-year-old Carl Sir was Chilton was piloting the bike and hit the tractor just before 6.30 p.m. on Saturday on Highway 151 in Teichita. At the time of the crash, he was passing a horse trailer. When he swerved to avoid oncoming traffic, the driver and passenger were both ejected. Sir was pronounced dead at the scene. His passenger, 47-year-old Darcy Lou Adkins, was airlifted from the scene and died a day later at Theta Care Regional Medical Center. A Sheboygan man is in jail for assaulting a child and then spreading images of that sexual assault online. Hal Parfait was arrested earlier this week after a tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And they contacted Sheboygan police about the online images. And court documents say the images included a young girl being forced to perform sex acts on him. When the victim was interviewed by a child forensic interviewer, she did not disclose any type of abuse but the photos told a different story. Most of the incidents happened in the evening when the little girl's mother was away and Parfait was left to care for her. Police later talked to Parfait, who admitted to forcing the child to perform those acts, which happened over a dozen times over the last six months. When he was asked how it started, he told the investigators that he thought the child thought it was cool Parfait is facing up to 40 years in prison if he is on each charge. Wisconsin Attorney General Brad Shamil announced Monday that a long backlog of rape kits has been cleared. Testing was never completed in thousands of sexual assault cases over a period of a decade. I am proud to announce that testing is complete on all 4,154 kits slated for testing. In less than three years, we will have tested the kits that built up over several decades, Shamel said. The Wisconsin Sexual Assault Kit Initiative provided extra funding and manpower to complete the testing. Most of the untested rape kits involved cases where victims decided not to press charges. In other cases, police were unable to make arrests or prosecutors did not, 
decide that there wasn't enough supporting evidence to bring the case to trial. There were more than 4,000 untested kits around the state, and the Wisconsin Department of Justice says rape victims will be notified. Some cases may be reopened, and the state also says it is likely that the DNA evidence from the newly tested kits could lead to new charges if a suspect is involved in additional sexual assaults. The group that led the sexual assaults initiative says they'll now work with the law enforcement, prosecutors, and emergency room staff to better respond to such cases. September 8, 2018, the final regular Plymouth dirt track racing program of the 2018 season brimmed over with a wide variety of racing action which included runaway statement style victories, heated side-by-side -side competition, inspired charges from the back of the pack, and a new A-Main track record. While three drivers wrapped up division titles before a large contingent of spectators on Saturday, September 8th, at the Sheboygan County Fairgrounds in Plymouth, Wisconsin. Former PDTR late model champion Mitch McGrath of Waukesha scored a, an impressive victory in the 30-lap Dirt Kings late model tour A Main. Plymouth's Justin Miller established a new track record of 5 minutes and 45 seconds en route to victory in the non-stop 30-lap Richards of Dunbar Sprint Car A Main. Tyler Kulo of Plymouth emerged with the victory in a hotly contested 30-lap Clips and Tips Grand National A-Main. Colton Van Heerden of Wapan made his first appearance of the season at PDTR, count with a victory from the rear of the field in time shortened 26-lap Cellcom B-Mod A-Main. Zach Bowden of Madison topped the 15-lap Kristen Hartman Pleasantville Reality Micro Sprint A Main. And finally, officials in Fond du Lac and Sheboygan counties are putting out a call for volunteers to help clean up flooding debris and damage. A volunteer reception center is now open every day from 9 a.m. to noon and 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. in Plymouth and the fire station on East Main Street. Once volunteers register, they will be given an assignment for the week, but won't be sent out on the day they register. Most of the work is needed in Cascade and Osceola. From a press release, emergency management from both counties is requesting volunteers who are willing and able to do strenuous physical labor, as well as those who can provide support services. At this time, we are not asking for equipment or specialized resources. Please do not report directly to the communities affected or active work areas, as you will be turned away and asked to register with a volunteer reception center. And to end the broadcast for today, we are wishing my sister, Lacey Lefebvre, a very happy birthday. And we'll see you next time for another recap of our local news. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.